This LOS is to convert among holding period yields, money market yields, effective annual yields, and bond equivalent yields. This is just a quick review of the formulas that we need. The bank discount yield is the discount over face times 360 over T. The holding period yield for money market instruments is just the face value minus the purchase price divided by the purchase price, okay? The effective annual yield is one plus the holding period yield to 365 over T. The money market yield is the holding period yield times 360 over T, or we could rewrite that, that the holding period yield equals the money market yield times T over 360, okay? Also, the money market yield is equal to 360 times the bank discount yield divided by 360 minus T time times the, times the bank discount yield, okay? And the bond equivalent yield is the holding period yield times 365 over days. So again, the money market yield and the bond equivalent yield are very similar, except that uh, for the bond equivalent yield, we're using 365 in the numerator. So the rule, uh, so therefore the bond equivalent yield is gonna be bigger than the money market yield because the numerator is bigger. So again, the rule is the bond equivalent yield is greater than the money market yield, is greater than the bank uh, discount yield, which is greater than the holding period yield. So this is an excellent uh, question with regards to converting amongst the yield. I said in terms of the CFA continuum, this is maybe a little bit on the hard side, but with a bit of practice, it gets easier because it's a two-part question, and with 90 seconds, you have to work your way uh, quickly and efficiently. So 180-day U.S. Treasury bill has a holding period yield of 2.375%. They're asking for the bank discount yield. The bank discount yield in percentage is closest to A, 4.64%, B, 4.75%, or C, 4.875%. Okay, the correct answer is A, and um, we just need to work our way through the math. As I said, with a little bit of practice, these get uh, easier. So you can see they've given us the holding period yield, and has been mentioned before in previous LOS, that connects, that's the connector between the uh, various types of yields. So if they've given us the holding period yield, we can use that to calculate the money market yield. Recall the money market yield is the holding period yield times 360 over T, okay? So that's pretty easy, and I put uh, the holding period yield into green so you could follow it through the formulas. So that's 0 0.02375 times 360 over 180, and that gives us a money market yield of 4.75%. Now we can use the money market yield to calculate the bank discount yield using the formula that I've shown you there, 360 times the bank discount yield over 360 minus T times the bank discount yield. So it's just a little bit of algebra. So you can see 0 0.0475 equals 360 over 360 minus 180 times the uh, bank discount yield. So you're solving for the bank discount yield. So zero point, uh, so we're gonna bring the denominator over to the left-hand side. 0 0.0475 times 360 minus 180 bank discount yield equals 360 uh, times the bank discount yield, which is the numerator. So we can solve then 17.10 minus 8.55 bank times the bank discount yield equals 360 times the bank discount yield. So a little bit more algebra, 17.10 equals 360 bank discount yield times the bank discount yield plus 855 times the bank discount yield. So the bank discount yield is going to be 17.10 divided by 368.55 equals 0 0.046398. So the correct answer is A. Not too bad, just a little bit of algebra. Solving for X, you have to know the two formulas though. Uh, with a bit of practice, it gets easier. Okay, this slide is just going through the calculations again because sometimes it's just good to slow down and do something twice rather than uh, rush through it. And this is fairly important. So you can see, I just wrote the bank discount yield here again, discount over face times 360 over T. And then the money market yield is the holding period yield times 360 over T, or we uh, know that it can be written in this formula as well, which is 360 times the bank discount yield over 360 minus time times the bank discount yield. 
So this is just the same question, and uh, it's I just put it um, in terms of steps. So step one, you're going to calculate that money market yield. You were given the holding period yield, so you know you're just plugging it into here, and you're going to get the money market yield. That should be fairly easy on the step one. Then the step two is that, you, as I said, that's why it was important that you have to memorize this formula. And what you're doing is you're just solving for the bank discount yield. So set it up, 0.0475, because now you've got the money market yield, equals 360 RBD over uh, 360 minus T times the bank discount yield. And then again, again, I'm just going through the algebra steps slowly, uh, uh, line by line, to show you that you're solving for the, the correct answer was A. So again, uh, I always say, do it once, practice it. Do it again, a second time. And then sometimes what I do is I'll just change the numbers up. You know, I'll change that holding period yield to say 2.5%. And I'll change, um, you know, the number of days from 180 to 150. And I'll just go through all the calculations again. Because as we know, uh, the best way to um, get good at things and to memorize them is to is through repetition. So do it again, do it again, do it again. When I look at a question like this, I'm going to uh, not make up my own question, but I'm going to redo the calculations a few times. Just change, uh, do it twice using the same numbers, then do it a third time, I make up my own numbers. Then when I go, I'll try to find a practice problem in a question bank or at the end of the reading solutions, uh, end of reading uh, problems with solutions, and uh, you should have no problem uh, through a lot of practice. Okay, here's a nice practice problem. I like to put these ones in because there's no math, but it's testing your understanding of the uh, math and the concepts. So the bond equivalent yield for a semi-annual pay bond is most likely A, equal to the effective annual yield, B, more than the effective annual yield, or C, equal to double the semi-annual yield to maturity. Okay, the correct answer is C. The bond equivalent yield is for a semi-annual pay bond is equal to double the semi-annual yield to maturity. And that's something I've, uh, that you'll cover again in fixed income. I wrote the formula there at the bottom just to remind you, bond equivalent yield is the holding period yield times 365 over the number of days. But that's not really helping us um, answer this question. And it's interesting that this comes up within uh, this LOS. But uh, as I said, you'll cover this in more detail under the fixed income section. Okay, this is a nice slide. It's in a very important one, and uh, it's it's kind of a con it's a consolidator slide. So we're gonna we calculate the bond equivalent yield, the money market yield, the discount basis yield, and the holding period yield. And it's for a 91 day, hundred thousand U.S. dollar uh, T bill that's sold at a discount rate of 7.91%. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get that purchase price. And remember, we've done that before in a previous LOS. The purchase price is 100,000, the face, minus, we use that percentage, 0 0.0791, times 91 over 360, times the 100,000, and we get the purchase price, 98,000.53. So we know what the discount interest is. The discount interest is $1,999.47. So the bond equivalent yield, I'm starting with the bond equivalent yield, is the holding period yield times 365 over uh, um, T. So that's an important one. We know that the bond equivalent yield, holding period yield, times 365 in the numerator over T. And so the second one that I did was the money market yield is also the holding period yield, but it's times 360 over T. See, this is consolidating now. And because 365 is greater than 360, we know that the bond equivalent yield is greater than the money market yield. So 8.18% is greater than 8.07%. So as I said, this is a good slide as a consolidator. Then the discount basis yield, we know that was the discount. Aha, we gotta be careful here, remember? This is not over the um, uh, purchase price, it's over the face value, over the face value. And the face value, is more than the purchase price, so we know that's going to be less. That's going to be less than the money market yield because the denominator is the face value 100,000. So that's the difference between the 
money market uh, yield and the discount basis yield, okay? So that makes sense that the discount basis yield is gonna be less than the money market yield because the denominator is using the face value, the 100,000, not the purchase price. Very similar formula. And then finally, the holding period yield should be easy. It's ending minus beginning divided by the beginning, and that's just giving us the 2.04 percent, which is the which is the smallest amount. Excellent side. Good. Uh, this is good practice and good memorization to uh, understand these uh, calculations for these different types of yields. Okay, li easy little practice problem. And as I said, sometimes it's important to understand your rules, memorize your rules. This is, has no math. Okay. So you get a question like this on the CFA level one exam, you're going to be really happy if you understand the rules and you've, and you've memorized your little uh, uh, chart. So 182 day, 182-day U.S. Treasury bill has a face value of 100,000. Of course, it sells for 98,500 at a discount. Which of the following yields is most likely the lowest? Most likely the lowest. The bank discount yield, the money market yield, or the holding period yield? Okay, for this solution, we can see that the um, yield, the lowest yield is C. It's the holding period yield. Now, I won't go through all the math on the bottom uh, for the calculation of the holding period yield, the bank discount yield, and the money market yield. Uh, we've been through that a couple of times. I just wanted to point out that if you follow the rule and memorize the rule, the bank uh, bond equivalent yield is higher than the money market yield, over the, which is greater than the bank discount yield, which is greater than the holding period yield you can answer this question without doing any math, just by memorizing the rule. Another excellent question to convert uh, between yields. So this is a 270-day U.S. Treasury bill, face of a, a value of 100,000, sells for 96,500 when issued. Assuming the investor holds the bill to maturity, the money market yield is closest to A, 3.36%, uh, B, 4.84, or C, 4.93%. Okay, the correct answer in this case is B, 4.84%. So the money market yield, I've written out the formula again for you, face value minus purchase price over the purchase price times 360 over the number of days to maturity. But I just want to show you sometimes the, the way that the solution is written, they're doing a bit of a shortcut. They're just doing the face value over the purchase price minus one uh, times 360 over the days to maturity, which is the holding period yield times the 360 over the days to maturity. So different strokes for different folks in terms of the math. Sometimes you see things presented in a different way and it causes you to think, well, hey, wait a minute, where did that come from? Face over the purchase price. Well, it's just doing the holding period yield times 360 over the days to maturity. So a good little practice problem there on how to calculate the money market yield. So we're down to the last slide for this LOS, and it's just another practice problem. So a U.S. Treasury bill has 90 days to maturity and a bank discount yield of 3.25%. So they're giving you the bank discount yield. The effective annual yield for the uh, T-bill is closest to A, 3.29%, B, 3.32%, or C, 3.36%. Okay, this is a nice little question. There's actually uh, three parts to it, so it's a little bit tricky. On the CFA continuum of questions, I'd say this is uh, one that's a little bit difficult uh, because you have to memorize all the formulas and then you have to go through three steps to uh, solve it. So the first thing you need is the purchase price. And we, in this case, this is very similar. We've done it twice before uh, in previous LOS, but they're not giving you a face value on this, like say 100,000 or a million. Uh, nevertheless, uh, if we just use, say, 100, we can calculate the purchase price using the same formula. 100, because they bought it as discount, minus the 0.325%, that's the convention uh, for quoting these, times 90 over 360, uh, times 100, okay? And that's going to give us a purchase price of 99.1875. Now, a second way that you could do it would be to use the formula for the bank discount yield, discount over face times 360 over T. So they've given you the bank discount yield, 3.25%. We're solving for the D, the discount. Uh, D is going to give us 0.1875. So we know the purchase uh, price here, 100 minus 0.8125 is 
is going to give us uh, 99.1875. So different strokes for different folks. Again, uh, two different ways to come up with the uh, same, uh, same answer, okay? Uh, I always recommend memorize one way and stick with it. So now that you've got the uh, price, it's easy to calculate the holding period yield. Remember, that's just ending minus beginning divided by beginning. Fantastic, that's not too difficult. So that's gonna give us 0 0.00819. And then finally, to get the effective annual yield, not too bad, one plus the holding period yield to 365 over T, and it's gonna give us 3.36%. So not bad, uh, again, it just takes a little bit of practice, and it, it's when you're looking at a problem like this, you have to remember, oh, I, what, is, what is my step one? And sometimes it's, it's hard to identify what that first step is. In this case, get the price. Once I've got the price, I can do my holding period yield easy. Once I've got my holding period yield, effective annual yield becomes uh, not too bad. So that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.